We are back at the Louisiana Superdome. Kentucky's fans want their ticket punched for the regional round to St. Louis. And then eventually on to St. Petersburg, they hope for another run at a championship. The defending champions for the first time in tournament history will face the Kansas Jayhawks in March Madness. Madness indeed in the air as Miami has already advanced to the regional round to the Sweet 16 by upending Utah here earlier today. Kansas and Kentucky coming up. They have never, never met in the NCAA tournament until today. Billy Packer, Jim Nance with you. And uh, Billy, let's face it, you and I would get so excited about the history of the game and these two programs. This feels like a Final Four right here, doesn't it? Well, you think about Fog Allen, the, you know, the kind of the guy created things there at Kansas. Adolph Ruck came from Kansas, the number one winning team of all time. Number two is, is the University of North Carolina, Dean Smith. Number three, Kansas itself. Heavyweights of college basketball, rich in tradition. Going on the line, can you imagine this just a second round? It's amazing. They did meet earlier this year, this season, December the 1st, in Chicago. Now, Shimu Evans had 11 points, 11 rebounds, but this man, Wayne Turner, will break a record here today, playing in this 149th game. He led the Cats with 14 points, and they blitzed. They blitzed Kansas, holding the Jayhawks to only 29 percent from the field that was the lowest scoring game ever in the in the great eight and how about these coaches Roy Williams and Tubby Smith their thoughts on this matchup today well they handled us pretty easily when we played in the great eight early in the year and it's an 18 point game and it really wasn't that close so we've got a major challenge to make sure that our kids think they can beat them they're a much different team than, than when we played them back in December they're much improved they are uh, they seem to be much more physical, uh, and that was probably one of the worst games that a Roy Williams coach team had played. We didn't play particularly well either, so it wasn't a very pretty game. Wasn't a pretty game, but this Kansas team certainly has been upgraded since that time, relying on a freshman point guard who has certainly grown here in the last month, Jeff Bochy. What a difference from December the 1st when they last met, Billy, if we look at their lineups. Jim, I saw them play early in, in uh, December as well, and Bochy was just then learning the ropes of playing a point guard position. Been a great scorer in high school, but entirely different responsibility when you're back there handling the ball all the time. Look at Tubby Smith, second season. He's never lost in the tournament as the Wildcat coach winning the championship, directing them to that title in San Antonio a year ago. Scott Patchett was the MVP of the SEC tournament, and there it is, Wayne Turner moves past Christian Leitner, and this ball goes in the air. He'll be the most experienced college player of all time. Who would have thought it? Second round, Kansas and Kentucky for the first time ever in the NCAA tournament. How about that? Bradley out jumps Chenoweth. It'll be an interesting battle inside today between those two centers, both sophomores, Bradley and Chinowitz of Kansas. Here's Scott Padgett, loves this shot. In and out, and Chinowitz had position. Jim, I think this game sends more about where college basketball is now than anything that's happened in the tournament. And the fact that you see the Southwest Missouris and people advancing, you see the balance in college basketball. No longer do the power programs rule the game. Boshi, there's the freshman. Three-pointer. He's and got a great... Yeah, he's got a... You like that release, huh? Consecutive streak going on those three-point shots. He's got his hands full here, though, with Turner. You talk about his experience. A very difficult guy to guard on those penetration moves. Gets it. away by Pugh, and he lifts it ahead to Robertson. 5 nothing, Kansas at the start. Jim Allison, who has been very consistent with his play in all phases, was fell asleep there and just let Robertson break away from him. Kansas, as everybody knows, a much better defensive team now than they were back in December. Ball tipped and last touch by Kansas. Yes, Bill, you talk about the, well, the way the tournament shapes up in the regional round. We do have the Southwest Missouri States in there. Congratulations to Steve Alford, Gonzaga, Miami University. Some names we're unaccustomed to seeing in that round. Good blocking out that time. Both of these teams hold opponents down under 40. For Kansas, 38%. For Kentucky, 37%. So it's hard to get points against them. Allison thought about stepping back for the three. A quick can of Kentucky passing yields a basket inside by Allison. Padgett, very good assist turnover ratio. That, that was his 92nd assist on the year. He's only turned it over 61 times for a power forward. That's excellent. Robertson, they get across. 
That midcourt pressure, and they'll go to the line as Evans called for the block. Tournament appearances, Kentucky, well, they have the record for not only tournament appearances, but tournament overall victories. And there's, there's combined, some heavyweights, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Combined, these two programs have won nine national titles, 3,400 and 34 victories overall, and 23 Final Four appearances. And, and, and that's what makes it all the more amazing, Jim, that they have never faced each other in an NCAA tournament. I mean, you think about, well, Kentucky and Utah having met the last three years, and they were what some thought were on a collision course to make it four straight years. Not going to happen now with the Utes eliminated today. But how that could happen, three straight years, four times in the 90s, and never these two tangling in a Final Four or anywhere. Budget. Both teams kind of mirror, mirroring themselves in regard to how they're playing defense. Picking up full court. There's Evans on the medium-range jumper that he likes. Kentucky picking up full court. And you know what this means. They're going to be coming with that second five sometime early in this first half. They're going to try to wear down and turn it into two complete games, different games. Play you the first half to keep it tight, and then wear you out for the second. Chenna with one bounce, loses control of it on the way up, and then gets hacked. Kentucky can go 10 deep. Kansas really plays about eight, eight in the lineup. Now, some of you will be uh, shortly uh, being sent to the Purdue-Miami game in that wild, wild East bracket that has already seen Duke advance today in Southwest Missouri State. They will meet in the Sweet 16, and Temple eliminating Cincinnati. And Jim, you see that juggernaut uh, of Duke University, and you start thinking of teams and styles that could beat them. I really felt, in Cincinnati, I didn't feel could play six games because of their backcourt shooting. I didn't think they could play six games and have it going for them all six, but I thought if they ever got to face Duke, it might be one of those kind of games where they got backcourt scoring, but they'll never find out this year because of that outstanding zone defense that Temple plays. They just couldn't get by them. for Kansas and a turnover. Ryan Robertson celebrates. Good defense by Robertson. The back door seemed to be available for Allison. Just the miscommunication on the pass. In their win over Evansville, Kansas, which won't happen today, out-rebounded Evansville, 45 rebounds to 15. And Kansas shot 63%. Total dominance in that game on their part. <laughs> Bradford over to Chinaway, nice. banks at home. Good pass to the Bradford. assist by Bradford. Bradford was seven for seven in that Evansville game. One of his best performances of the year. Kentucky probably has to be a little shocked by, you know, remembering what Kansas was like and what they're seeing right now, an entirely different ball club. I'd have to give the psychological edge to Kansas on that one. Well, that's on number 32. Hugh. With the personal, it's his first. 10-4, Kansas. The team that shot only 29% from the field against Kentucky in the first game. Held to a seasonal low point total. It held up through the season, I should say, and so did the field goal percentage. And here's Bradley with that 45% free throw shooting. Has looked pretty solid in the tournament. Roy Williams' hair uh, is not quite as dark as it was maybe earlier in the week. Promised his players if they won the Big 12 tournament, he'd dye it black, and he did on Monday. He's been trying to wash it out a couple times a day since. All right, it's a little sloppy on the uh, Jayhawk end that time. Bradford with no place to go. Kentucky waiting for him with three men on the defensive end. Game really hasn't settled in yet in yeah, regard to what kind of an offensive flow that can be established. Tayshawn Prince, freshman, 21. In the lineup for the Cats. Bradford matching up pretty nicely with him. Prince. That's Bradford. Yeah. Slaps it out of bounds. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Excellent block by Chenoweth. Gives him up 77 on the year. Just think of Miami, Ohio, the outstanding defense they played. They only blocked 58 as a team on the year. Here's a one guy on one team with 77. 
Prince, too strong, tipped up by Padgett. Oh, that oh. ball's on, on, the, on the rim. Yep, basket interference on Bradley. And we've hit our first break with Kansas doubling the score on Kentucky in the opening minutes. State game broke down in the locker room telling the players and several of the players are having a very difficult time. The younger players like Tayshawn Prince, they will be wearing black patches on their jersey today and have decided to dedicate their season to John Stewart. Jim. They felt that John Stewart was already a part of this team. Living in Indianapolis, he was able to come to four or five Kentucky games this year. And there's a jumper by Ryan Hogan, who's come in for the first time. In fact, all the starters are out of the game for Kentucky. They've got Kamara and Smith, Prince, McGlure, and Hogan, who just hit the three in the lineup for Kentucky. Hogan, very impressive off the bench in the last game as well. Chenoa is stepping outside, and this is what we expected Tubby Smith to do. He just tries to wind you on down here in that first half, playing a lot of people. It worked out very effectively for him. And remember last year, he was very patient with his team in the first half in each and every game in his drive to the national championship, including the big comeback against Duke. Hogan, rebounded by McGlure. Good idea by Kamara, get it back out and set up. McGlure backing in on Chenoweth, recovers and Flips it way too strong. Boy, Kansas really looking to run on this basketball team. Oh, they called the block on Smith. Emmy Award winner John Larroquette returns to television as a royal pain and innkeeper with an attitude. Don't miss the series premiere of Pain Monday. That's tomorrow, uh, March 15th. That's the premiere date of Pain following Raymond on CBS. Jim, you know, uh, with the great traditions that these two schools have, Kentucky has a lead 18 to three in overall games played, but probably one of the games that was the most bitter game that they've ever played is in Roy's second year when Kansas beat Kentucky 150 to 95. There were a few people that remember that around Wildcat country, huh? Yeah, 1989 at Allen Fieldhouse, and Tubby Smith was an assistant for Rick Patino that year, and he had been out scouting, and he arrived uh, late for the game. And he walked in and looked up at the scoreboard. He thought it was some kind of malfunction, from what I'm told. That's those are records. That's records. one of those where you may think you're up 95 to 50. You don't realize yeah. that the 100's not up there, yeah. you know? Yeah, the scoreboard doesn't have the ability That's to put right. a one up there. And you're real happy till you find out, hey, you're behind. Well, we've got the one seed in the Midwest down early, 12-8. And a traveling call here. Right, Williams changes defenses, goes zone for the first time. So he's going to go ahead and change his defenses where Tubby Smith is going to change his personnel. Kentucky's only made three of 12 in the field and turned it over three times, as many turnovers as field goals. Kenny Gregory in the ball game now. Gives some instant offense for this team. He had his first double-double of the year on Friday. First of his career. Yeah. 15 points and 10 rebounds, and that shot Goes awry, Smith at the other end. And out to Robertson. Boy, Kansas really looking to make this a run-shoot type basketball game. Forcing Kentucky back, takes away any opportunity if Kentucky doesn't score to get into their press. Robertson banks it home. Eight points, eight points for Ryan Robertson. A senior with a lot of tournament experience himself. We talked about Wayne Turner, Ryan Robertson right on up there. Chasing Danny Manning to be the all-time number of games played at the University of Kansas. Chinoweth. Bang bodies down low, want to whistle for it. And a greeting for Lester Earl, if you want to call it a greeting. Also coming in, freshman Marlon London for Kansas. Earl, a Louisiana native uh, out of Baton Rouge, first recruited and signed with LSU. Later, his recruitment process landed LSU on probation. And they're still bitter about that down here in Cajun country, blaming Earl 
He's been booed every time he touches the ball. Good recognition oh, by got players stepped on accidentally by McGlure. And that, that was Robertson who was down on the floor and it, no fault of McGlure as he came right down on his head. Robertson in some severe pain here. And that was a good recognition by Kamara there that realized he was being played by a much smaller player here and takes Robertson right on inside. Now watch what happens here. Here comes McGlure up. No intention whatsoever there to hurt anybody. Matter of fact, he reached down to try to hope that it, Robertson was okay, but a little shaken. Watch here, there's Robertson. Well, you can see that, uh, matter of fact, that's the kind of thing where you can turn your ankle as well there. McGlure, who did have some severe suspensions laid on him this year. We have, remember that altercation we had in the Louisville game early on this year, and but he has really come back, got himself in the right mental state, and is very valuable to this team now. Gregory in for Kansas. Kenny Gregory, he can score. Average is 11 a game coming off the bench. We talked about this freshman, Boshi. The other freshman on the floor, London, has also come on. Much uh, greater performance than when they first played Kentucky. There he is, this Gregory coming in, the sophomore. Well, there was a mistake, in my opinion, on the part of uh, Kentucky. Pugh is not going to take that ball all the way and, and make a, a tough driving shot. He's looking to pass. Hogan, the most dangerous guy out here from three, although Prince has got great range as well. McGlure, nice touch this Very time. Nice. And you can see Roy Williams going zone against his second team from Kentucky. Here's London. Keep strong, and Kamara sweeps it away. Pretty quick sh shot there by London. Didn't give his team a chance to get in position. Prince, three-pointer. All net. He can thread it. He's got great range on the jump shot. Pretty interesting with this team out there that can play against his own. Maybe a better shooting team than the first team that plays for Kentucky. Prince has got good range from three. Hogan, we know, is a good three-point shooter. And uh, Smith is a streaky outside shooter. Well, so far, Kentucky production, five points from the starters and 10 from the Kentucky bench. But again, uh, Tubby Smith has such incredible confidence in this substitution pattern. Starters sitting down there resting for the second half. Boy, Earl gets no relief, does he? Nope, and it will stay that way until they leave town. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Look hey, Robinson rejected by McGlory. He can do that with the best of them. Chinowick will come back in for Kansas. And Jim, remember against New Mexico State, the score at halftime? 34 34, yep. exactly. So that, and that's where a coach has got confidence to say, hey, I know what my game plan is, just as we saw Charlie Coles in the first game. Going to stick with it. Two on the shot clock. Robertson launches. And Camaro runs it down. It's 34-34 at halftime. These two teams combined in history have 34-34. That's a walk. That's the number of wins, that is, and a traveling call on Camaro. On the court. Yep, 3,434 wins between these two-story programs. And Kansas has never trailed here in the first half. Feud. This was the 9 millimeter. What drove this preacher to hire a hitman? Revenge. 48 hours Monday. Jim Nance with Billy Packer and Bonnie Bernstein at the Louisiana Superdome. Kentucky's bench scoring two-thirds of the Wildcat points here. Well, Jim, remember in the in the game against New Mexico State, the bench guys averaged 13 minutes of playing time in that game. So there is some method in this, what seems to be to many, many people, madness of Tubbies and the fact that he lets that bench play and lets them play with confidence. Oshie is out of the game. Starting point guard for Kansas, London, freshman, jumper, three. The young man's been very confident with his game. Had eight points, five rebounds in what was somewhat limited playing time against Evansville, but was very solid in that ball game. Bradley got the low post moves. Let's see if he can take Chenoweth. Banging bodies, will it be Earl or Chenoweth? It's Earl slapped with that one. Well, there's no help down there, no doubling down on Bradley at all. I think if that's going to be the case, Kentucky can use that to their advantage. 
because Bradley has excellent low post maneuvers and they could get Chen with in some foul trouble. Let's see if they go to him quickly here. Interesting against the against the first team Kansas man to man against the second team zone. Oh, nice job by Chenoweth against the quicker player. Really sat down on defense. Look at that big guy out there. Way seven out footer, sitting yeah. down. And Turner bangs it home. It's a two. His jump shot has never pretty. been pretty. <laughs> Not pretty. No style points. But give him two and a and steal a for the all-time Kentucky steel man. And three by Patrick. They get him in bunches. Big mistake having Lester Earl take the ball out of bounds. He should be down on the other end as a finisher. He's not a creator. London fakes, shoots, makes it from two. Kansas doing a nice job with Kentucky presses of spreading him out. We're not even halfway through this uh, opening 20 minutes, and Kentucky already has nine players in the scoring column. Big boost from the bench. Kentucky not looking to go to Bradley. I think they should give him a shot down in there. Turner. Bouncing around, tipped around. Bradley tried to put it back. Picked up by Earl. Again, a turnover by Lester Earl. This time is a foul. Going against Kentucky. Oh, yep. I think it might be Pageant reaching in for Bradley. See it down here. Earl really having trouble with. Ball handling. I think that foul's on Padgett, Jim. You're right. Padgett's first. It was an attempt to call the timeout, not granted. And notice what Kansas is doing. They're throwing over the top of this press, and then looking to score with it. Almost picked off again. Bochi with a three. Great rebound. And dribbling out of traffic, drawing the foul. Turner. That's the fourth team foul. Jim, think about, we talk about tradition and history. Wayne Turner's the first guy ever, ever, at the University of Kentucky to have 1,000 points, 300 rebounds, 400 assists, 200 steals. Now, all the great ones, more All-Americans than any other university in the United States, and that's what he's done. He's played more games and put those stats up there. Talking about a guy without a great jump shot. He really had a productive career. Here's a great jump shooter. It's Scott Padgett with another three. That ties it at 23. And if you're Roy Williams, you got to be concerned. When Kentucky hits well from the outside, beyond three, they can play with anybody. That has been their nemesis in games they've lost this year. Gregory lost it going up. Last touch by Kentucky. You think about probably their best game, and I, and I don't want to lay this one on them, but might have been Maryland where they were just outstanding from the three-point line. And when they do that with their defense and their ability to score otherwise, they are a very difficult team to handle. Gregory, great open look. Yep. And give Pew credit on that one. I, I think Kentucky's giving Pew too much credit for his offensive ability. I mean, they doubled down on him. He's looking to pass, not to score. Allison, can he match the three? Yes, indeed. Starting to get in sync now, Bill. Yeah, they really are. The whole, both teams. Chenoweth has not touched the ball, and McGlure doing a good job on him. A bad shot by Gregory, nothing there. Evans broke ahead, Allison on the other wing, back to Evans. That's Kentucky Beautiful. basketball right there, folks. Beautiful. Three on two break, Turner with the perfect pass, Evans likewise. Chenoweth, three at the other end. Roy Williams got to go a 20-second timeout. His guys are taking bad shots. You can't afford to do that against Kentucky. London saves it without going out, then tosses it out. Wow, we've got the under eight timeout. Kentucky with its largest lead. It's just a two-point edge here in the first half.
You talk about a team well drilled in the break. There takes Allison. Here goes Evans. Three on two break. Watch the passing. Beautifully done by Kentucky. Turner waits for the perfect time to get the angle. Pass, pass, layup. Just like you diagram it as a coach. You use that one in the drill for next year. It's too bad they can't give an assist to the man who triggered it too. The Turner one, like in hockey, how you can get multiple assists. And uh, that was just drawn up perfectly, executed there by the Cats. And what was the great thing about that is Turner's decision-making process to not throw the pass too early so the break could develop. Good block out by Bradford. Oh, stolen. Uh, Allison let it go through. Oh, Chenoweth ran right into McGlure. Almost broke his back. Didn't realize he was there. <laughs> now McGlure, is, in a very nice way, has almost wiped out two Kansas players. Much better decision to have Pugh take that ball out of bounds than it was Lester Earl before. Don't forget, you can chat live tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, with our own Clark Kellogg. Just log on to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. Chenoweth been very much outside in this ball game. Needs to get down in that low post to make McGlure guard him some. Hugh off the glass, and Kansas ties it at 28. Hugh was six for eight. He had 15 points and 10 rebounds. And Jim, as you pointed out, his first career double-double. And yet an effective player for a top basketball team. He takes a hit to the head and draws the foul. Foul on Allison. You know, the only bracket in this tournament that's uh, that's uh, not just wacky and uh, completely <laughs> helter-skelter is the South, where all top four seeds have advanced to the regional. Everything else is broken up, and uh, it could, in fact, in the East be, if Purdue wins against Miami, I mean, Duke would go to the Meadowlands and not even have a top 25 team in the, in the, uh, in the, in the grouping there. The only warning would be, and as, and as great as they're playing, I can remember a team called Kentucky in 1993. Outscored opponents for 36 a game going into the Final Four. Everybody had awarded them, and here's what? Wally, Wally Serpiak. Yeah, yes, and he is becoming the star of this tournament. He's led Miami to the Sweet 16 with an upset win over Utah here earlier today. 24 after a 43-point performance Friday. Bochy short. There have been some very unusual shots taken by Kansas down this stretch where they went from in the lead to getting now in a tie position, Jim. And I really think they've got to get back to their half-court set and let Chenoweth set up, get the ball down inside, make Kentucky play him in the low post. Kansas had a lead as large as eight on a couple of occasions. There it is. Chenoweth dunks it. As I said, they should put Chenoweth down at a low post. Is that what you meant? Yeah. I mean, you've got to take advantage of your low post player if he can catch the ball and score. Then you'll get some of these jump shots. Big solid screen. An extra pass always gets an open shot for a teammate. Pugh doing a terrific job on the boards. Oh, she, this surprises you. No, know, that's not the shot they want. It's not the shot they want. But it yields an over the back foul on Bradley of Kentucky. And McGlure will come in after that. That's the second on Bradley. Well, Boshi, the leading scorer all time in North Dakota high school basketball, and a tremendous transition, Jim. Not taking anything away from high school basketball in North Dakota, but to make that transition to this level of basketball very difficult. And he has to understand how to distribute the ball and make the play a little bit easier. He's talented enough to get his shot off when he wants to, but that's not the exact answer. Kamara has returned, and it comes Evans. There's another turnover. Turner trailing, and he dumps it down. You're playing against seniors out here. You know, this kid, MVP of the Big 12 tournament as a freshman, but he's playing against MVPs of tournaments that are seniors. So I'm about Boshi of yep. Kansas, number 13. And I'm talking about Padgett of Kentucky, so it's 
Padgett that have been seniors and played all these games, you have to think out there. Jenna with, with a nice turnaround. Player you said could be the greatest center when his career's over at Kansas. Outside of Wilt. This side of Wilt. Of course, Wilt followed Lavelle. Two former MOPs of the Final Four. Clyde Lavelle leading his team to a national championship. Wilt didn't, lost in that triple overtime to North Carolina, but he was the MOP that year of the Final Four. Evans was on the line. That's a two-pointer. They've had five ties here in the first half. Bradford Wait, move. We'll shoot two. Really, to summarize this tournament, Wally's world will open up in St. Louis starting on Friday. Well, Jim, let's think about some of the conferences. Pac-10 had four in, they have four out. WAC had three in, they have three out. Conference USA had four in, they have four out. The SEC is still hanging in there with Auburn and Florida in regionals. The ACC has got two in regionals. Uh, the Big East has got two already in regionals with St. John's and Connecticut. The Big Ten is two in regionals with Ohio State and Iowa. Dr. Tom stays alive, not just gets by the first round, but continues to continues to roll there. And the SEC could have four by days in with Ole Miss playing right now against Michigan State. That's a tight one early. And Kentucky here. And then you have the Gonzagas in the Southwest Missouri's who are ready to make uh, this a very interesting run. And you know who Gonzaga's first game was against this year? Was against... Uh, How about uh, Kansas? Kansas beat yeah. them. Beat them rather handily, but again, that was uh, maybe even November. Might have been before December 1st. Yeah, it was November. Yeah. Could have four Big Ten teams in, too, by days in. Purdue's right now playing Miami, Florida. Nice hook shot. That's two in the game now by McGlure. Kansas may have to give Chenna with a little help there. Look at that hustle. Oh, and Saul Smith pleads. Hey, wait a minute. I may have touched Robertson's hand. And you know what he gets? He gets a little help to see if one. Yes, yes sir. It's the overturn. How about that? Good, smart play. Son of a coach. He makes the play. And then Saul was right on top of it. He was right in between both officials there, Jim. So he probably had the best angle. Look at McGlory's uh, underneath the, buried underneath the bench there. Good thing he didn't hit one of the legs of the table. <laughs> He's been uh, on the floor or involved with collisions on the floor throughout this first half. Got basically two point guards in the game right now for uh, Kentucky with Smith and Turner. A lot of great movement without the ball by Kentucky. The floor goes outside this time. Dips down and out, and Chenoweth with an aggressive rebound, his fifth. You know, Chenoweth been on the floor a lot, Jim. He's having a battle against two different centers. Okay. And not able to climb the ladder high enough to get that. Maybe that's the take. He wasn't quite there. That pass was not that far off line. Chenoweth has nine points and five rebounds. Kansas and Kentucky all tied at 34. Kentucky tied with just under four minutes left in, down in New Orleans. Wally Zerbiak, the hero of the Miami-Utah game. I guess it's probably not sunk in yet, huh? No, it hasn't. And watching these two teams play, thinking we're going to play one of these two teams with all their storied pass is going to be extra special, and I'm really looking forward to it. Quick rise to start them for you. I know you came out to scout these two teams, but you've spent more time signing autographs for little kids. Have you even seen them? I love it. You know, that's what it's all about. I have no problem making kids happy, and, you know, I'll watch this game on TV if I have to. I I don't know if you've heard the song uh, Meet Me in St. Louis, but it's pretty appropriate. Wally, thanks. Jimmy. Bonnie, why don't you hum us a few bars there? <laughs> oh, come on. You know I have a terrible voice. Let Billy do it. He can't sing either, but, you know, he's sitting next to you. All right, Billy. You know, uh, I'll get off of that one. But how about how about Wally Serbiak? Does it conjure up a few? Uh, 1979. I thought that Larry might be Bird. on your mind. Yep. Well, how, how about the stories that are developing? Steve Alford, you know, took Indiana national championship team. His dad's coaching with him. Kid from Indiana. Uh, so many neat stories here developing in this tournament. Good follow through by Padgett, just didn't drop, didn't get up over the front of the rim. People may look at that and say Miami's going to a, a regional, but that's, uh, that is going to be a story you're going to be hearing about all week after the two games that Wally Serbiak played here in New Orleans. 43 to lead them in an opening round victory over the Pac-10 Washington Huskies. 24 more today to knock out last year's finalist, Utah. And another block by McGlure. 
Well, I'm so impressed with McGlure, the way he's come around this year, really giving Kentucky what they needed from him in the low post. Smith is a good shooter from there. Yep. And off the screen, had an open look. Three-pointer. Had 17 against Ole Miss that's doing pretty well today. His high for the year, but he can score. Gregory Jumper. One of the better six-man players in the college game today. Yeah, that may be a misnomer calling him a six-man because, he, you know, he's one of their five best players. Had 12 points in the Evansville game. Very explosive. Like Morris Peterson with Michigan State, who's their leading scorer, but comes off the bench. A little half hook. Left-handed this time, and it rolls off the rim. Approaching two minutes to go in the half. It's been a tight one throughout. Kansas did have an early eight-point edge. But whenever, whenever, whenever Kansas goes inside first and then outside, they do a lot better. And one of the things that Kansas will have to be concerned about is Kentucky used a lot of people. They're wearing down Kansas as they have everybody else. They're going to play the first half just to get to the second half. One of the things I, I really enjoyed the comment by Mike Krzyzewski in the paper today where he said he wanted his guys to have to play with Trajan Langdon because he didn't want his guys to learn how to pace themselves in a basketball game assuming he's not there to play. McGlure with another basket inside. Six points off the bench. Pump fake, but nothing there. McGlure used, Gregory used his ability to jump. Hang in the air a little. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Greg and Clark will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights of the 1999 Men's NCAA Basketball Championship. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. And if you're Kansas right now, I think what you want to do the rest of the way, Jim, is use a little bit of clock. Kentucky can score quickly. They've got, you know, four points, a pretty big working margin in the ball game right now. If you're Kansas, you don't want them to score and, uh, and, and put that press on you right away. If you're Kentucky, just keep playing the way you are. I think they're playing beautiful basketball. Pass inside off the fingertips of McGlure. At the other end, that was a foul on Pugh, his second. Kansas with 16 fouls, but we have just a minute to go here in the half. Chenoweth kind of walking down the court. Got to be a little tired. Oshie's got a switch. He's got the big guy on him. He's got to keep the ball and back it out and then go by. Jenna with doubled up. Back to him. And Turner, did he have his ground? No, they call traveling. And Jim, there was a case where Kansas had Kentucky right where they wanted him, but Jenna couldn't get the ball back on out. He had Boshi wide open for a jump shot. And again, the negative reaction to the insertion of Lester Earl. Jim, they may be booing Lester Earl coming back here, but could you imagine what they'll do when Harold the Show Arsenio comes back here after having uh, 14 for 26 against North Carolina and 12 out of 27 for 32 against Florida? He's the kid from Weber State, for those who didn't see it, Arsenal. From, Arsenal from right here in uh, New Orleans, 68 in two games. I thought for a minute you were talking about Arsenio Hall and doing a little <laughs> martial law promo. No, I thought, okay. <laughs> Final 20 seconds of the half. Lester Earl slipped. Oh, oh McGlure is so acrobatic. Kentucky will get the last shot, it appears, with 12 seconds. Oh, a timeout, 20, called by Tubby. You know, Tubby does this a lot, doesn't he? He has a pattern. He loves to call that timeout and set up that last shot. Look for the double screen with Patrick coming over the top. Billy. You've been here for it. We've seen it. The tradition, the tournament heritage right here in New Orleans. Let's look back at some of the moments in New Orleans. The tie, 18. Jordan. Michael Jordan. Oh, he threw it to the wrong man. He threw it to Worthy. It's over. Smart takes the shot. Oh, and Anna wins the championship. Keith Smart is the hero. Number brings it into the front court. They have no timeouts remaining. Oh, he causes too many timeouts. It's a technical foul. Last uh, held here in 1993, the Final Four with North Carolina and Dean Smith winning his second championship. 
22nd timeout now utilized by Kansas. I think what Roy Williams wants to do because these guys go over film after film after film to know what Kentucky likes to do in this situation. Set play and Kentucky's been very effective at this. If they look for a guy, if they put like a Hogan in the game, and I think he is in the game, or a Paget coming off a double screen up top looking for the three point shot. Tubby Smith likes to do this a lot. Into the hands of Turner. Screen. Here comes Hogan. Nothing there. Good job by Kansas to recognize the play. And they pick his pocket with Robertson, and he calls a timeout. Ooh, Roy Williams didn't want it. He he'd did rather have saved it. Exactly. He, he'd rather have had that timeout with 1.4 to go. What can you do? But, you know, with 2.2 against Oklahoma State this year, Roy Williams went the length of the floor and got the ball to, to Robertson, where he was fouled, taking a three to win that ball game. But you'd still rather have that one. Yeah, I'd like to have that, that one back. in the second half. Let's take a look at the data bank in this uh, brief break. Most tournament wins, Kentucky with 82, and Kansas is fifth. In the 90s, Kansas with more wins than any program with Kentucky number two. And Kansas is now guaranteed to have that. The yep. winning his team of the 90s. Here we go. London gets off a shot. Valparaiso maybe, huh? <laughs> Not there. <laughs> Almost. Well, Kentucky comes back, climbs back from eight down. And at the end of the first half, the score is Kentucky 40 and Kansas 36. Greg and Clark will be along with Pennzoil at the half right after this message. Arthur Anderson, Propecia, and by the United States Air Force. 10 different Wildcats put points on the board, and Kentucky leads by four, getting set for the second half. Pepsi One presents the Virtual Playbook. Jim, one of the things that I think Kansas has to do early here in the second half is to go inside to Chenoweth. Here we see Bradford on a drive, dishes off where Chenoweth really makes himself active inside, puts the ball back in the basket. We'll see it right here. Drive's gonna come here, Chenoweth holds his ground, the dump goes right inside, right into the basket. Kansas is best off if they go inside first and then outside, and what they have a tendency to do, particularly with their young point guard, freshman point guard, Boche, is put the ball up too quickly before they give the inside an opportunity to operate. You felt early that neither team had really kind of found the flow, but they uh, got in sync late in the half. And uh, what do you expect we'll see here in the in the second stanza? Well, I think that uh, Tubby Smith has got his team right where he wants it. He was able to use that that substitution pattern he has been very effective with throughout the SEC tournament and, of course, here in the NCAA tournament. And I think they'll continue that. He goes back with his starting five. For Kansas, again, I think that their key is, number one, getting the ball in bounds and not getting caught on the press for some cheap baskets. And, again, getting the ball inside here early in the second half Take Chenoweth effective. There they go, down inside. Chenoweth flips it too strong. Bradford soars, puts it back off the glass for two. Good things happen to Kansas when they go inside. Final six minutes of the first half. Kansas hit a down stretch. Scored only six points the last six minutes and turned it over six times. That gave Kentucky that lead at halftime. Quick pass, Bradley to Padgett. He's stuck. See, with Turner, you can afford to double down because he does not want to shoot the jump shot when the ball is thrown back out to him. Bradley, fade away, and a push off. He'll go to the line. Q had pretty good defense there. Didn't need the shove. You know, Billy, we were earlier dissecting the South. We're all top four seeds advanced. Not the case in the West. Look at this. The one, the five, the six, and the ten advance now to the regional in Phoenix. And had Weber State found a way, then that overtime game against Florida win. <laughs> Very close. Had they won, they would have had a Weber State-Gonzaga Sweet 16 matchup, meaning one of the two would have been just one game away from going to the Final Four. Well, Jim, one of the things that I love about it is that nobody floats you forward. This is not college football. You know, you've got to play the games. You've got to prove that on that given day, you're the better team. 
here's the press. Very effective. Nobody coming back to meet you with the ball. And they have to take another timeout. A minute into the second half, they had that 20 that they burned with just 1.4 to go in the first half. They're out of 20s now. Jim, one of the things that uh, jumps out at you when you look at the halftime stats are the, are the field goal shooting percentages for Kansas, 48%, and for Kentucky, 50. Now, these are two teams that hold their opponents below 40% shooting, so pretty effective first-half offense. Nice distribution of the ball as well. When you look at who scored, about everybody got in the point total here. Boshi and Turner. Freshman defended by senior. Another turnover for Kansas. They let an eight-point lead slip away in the first half. And now Kentucky with a three-point lead just a minute into the second half here in New Orleans. So she's getting an education here. When you get by these guys on the press, you got to start setting up in your half-court set. He tries to break for the big play all the time. Just not effective against uh, experienced players like Kentucky has on the floor. Bradley comes out of bounds, but no, he traveled. He traveled. A lot of nice low post moves by Bradley. Ole Miss with a three-point lead over the one seed in this Midwest bracket at halftime. There's Bradford showing a touch from the outside. We didn't see that when he was young. And how about Purdue, 15 ahead of Miami at halftime. Again, that East bracket could have only one team ranked into the regional round. Duke, the number one in three non-top 25 teams at the Meadowlands if Purdue holds on. Uh, Gene Cady, whose club really was struggling in February. Well, some people wondering if they even belonged in the NCAA tournament. He's had so many years where he's taken the Glenn Robinson type teams and say, gee, he just didn't quite get there this year. Looks like he may get there with a club that was struggling. You saw the Miami score where earlier today, Wally Zerbiak and the Red Hawks ousted Utah. And they're becoming uh, another one of these great Cinderella themes. And Zerbiak uh, certainly becoming uh, a hero in this tournament. Well, I really think Roy Williams has got to set the freshman down. He's trying to do so much by himself. He's costing his team dearly. Evans scores on the inside. There it goes again. Very dangerous pass. Bradford. Would have been some basket had it gone. Kansas ball. So 43-40 Kentucky. Two and a half into this second half. And I think for a couple of reasons, Kansas would want to play this game half court at a time. Kentucky's got more depth. Ryan Robertson ties it with a three. And there's what Kansas does well, when they can play half court at a time and not get in the running game with Kentucky. Very effective. It's the seventh tie of this game. Evans in the lane, turns around for two. Amazing shot over the seven-footer. Bradford open shot, an easy one for the Jayhawks. Attacking against the press, Roy Williams obviously has a different game plan. For a moment there, this was the pace of that game back in 1989 where yeah. Kansas scored 150. Yeah, but I, I just think that that's uh, exactly what Tubby would like to see happen. And there is a foul and Pugh doesn't get called. Runs through the screen. Pugh and Chenoweth both have their, their fists up asking to come out of the game. As I said, this plays into Tubby's hands. You try to run with this team. Boshi. No, sir. And a reach in on Bradford. Pugh is exhausted out there. He has to come out. He's just trying to get his breath here. And we're, we're only into four minutes in the, in the second half. And he's going to sit down. And Tubby's going to counter with five Absolute players. Brings in the second unit. Pugh, the only substitute for Kansas. It's Gregory who comes in to replace him. And there's Bradford bending over getting his breath. The guy that's shown more stamina than anybody else is Chenoweth, which is amazing for a seven-footer. The 
makes Kentucky second five. Really gave them a boost in the first half. The starters ineffective at the beginning for the Wildcats, and this group helped bring them back from eight down. Sure, and, and you know, Jim, not only are they talented, but they're rested and talented. Smith, three-pointer, his second of the game. That's 20 bench points for the Wildcats. And let's see if they're going to trap half court. No, they go back into their zone. McGlure patrolling the center. Ten on the shot. Peterson splits the defender, sets up Pochi for an open three. That ties it back at 48. Isn't it amazing? Every time Kansas will be patient, get three or four or five passes in the half court set, they're effective. Good job by Gregory. You know you've got to get out there and face up on Prince because he'll take that long jump shot. Tomorrow. Tipped up. Got the long arms. Great hustle by Chenoweth. Boy, they had three chances inside, and Chenoweth stood the ground there for the Jayhawks. Boy, it is amazing how he's matured as a player in just one year with his stamina. Gregory flies and will go to the line for two. McGlure on the block. Let's take a look at the East bracket, uh, Billy. And uh, Duke versus Southwest Missouri State. And Temple against the Miami Purdue winner with Purdue really in control of that thing. How about Duke versus the other three in that field? Well, obviously, as I, we've all said that Duke was the prohibitive favorite coming in. I'm going to remind everybody, 1993, this very Kentucky team, they had a 31-point scoring margin average going into the final four in regard to the games that they won in the NCAA tournament leading up to the final four. But what about that regional here? That was a final four where they swept four games. How about against those three teams? Well, they're, they're, Jim, they're the favorite team. They've been better than anybody throughout the course of this year. And what about Alfred's team, the way that he's got Southwest Missouri State playing? I don't care about any team. I mean, <laughs> Duke plays Duke's basketball. I, I go back to Wait, the story with... Wait, did you Duke not to get to the final yeah, four? Yeah, I thought okay. Cincinnati beat him, never even got to play him. But, you know, I go back to that story that my wife said to Mike Krzyzewski, back in September. Gee, I heard you're going to be good. He said, no, Barbara, we're going to be very good. Hogan three. He might have been underestimating himself when he said, very good. Nice oh, pass. Is that Robertson to Earl blocked by Kamara. Earl hesitated. That was one of those where you needed to catch and put it right up. Kamara listed at 6'10", Jim, but he's... He plays like a seven-footer, just like Chenoweth. When he develops, as they all do in this Kentucky system, look out, that sophomore and junior year. Traveling. And, and we're seeing a lot of freshman mistakes in this game. Trying to do too much too quick. Everson comes into this game, 103 assists, only 47 turnovers, a perfect pass. Lester Earl wasn't ready for it, and that little hesitation cost Kansas a basket there. It's a beautiful no-look pass. Look at the bobble in the hands. Takes too much time to develop, and there's the block from the weak side. We talked about how these two programs are so connected, with Rupp having played for Allen at Kansas. And this is the 22nd meeting between the two, with Kentucky leading the all-time series 18 to 3. But they have never, until today, met in the NCAA tournament. There's Kentucky. They pick up full court pressure. Kansas goes over the top of the press. Then Kentucky drops back into their 2-3 zone. London's been pretty effective as a shooter. Dangerous Burn, pass. Another steal. I think everybody underestimates the anticipation ability of Turner and those long arms that he has. He plays a lot taller than he looks. Nice patience by Kentucky getting the extra pass. Magic, there's the extra pass, and McGlure, they call it a tie-up situation, a Kansas ball. Good job inside by Kansas, and that was that was well executed by Kentucky. One of the things that's kind of surprising, Jim, is that the Kentucky players realizing that McGlure does not have the quickest feet or the best hands sometimes make those interior passes a little bit too tough for him to handle. 
As long as he has space so that he can operate, he's okay. There's a hard time in that kind of situation. You saw on the scores there that Michigan State starts the second half ablaze and has taken the lead by four over Ole Miss after being down three at halftime. A lot of experience on that team. That's the difference uh, right now down the stretch. You see these freshmen making some mistakes. Michigan State led by a guy like Cleves understands how to play. London three-pointer. Hatchet. Boy, Evans can fit it. No, did he ever. He took off as he ran by us. You can feel the breeze in there. Chenoweth's not expecting. Turner comes in and knocks it away. Here comes the Kentucky run. They had one like this in the first half. Crossover dribble between the legs by Turner. Great play. They pick him up again. They beat it over the top to London. He'll go in, challenging, and McGlure is going to be called for the foul. Yeah, he got him with the body, yeah. but he blocked that one. He was a foot over the top on the block. Unfortunately, hit with the body. London thinks he's got it. Look at this. This is all ball, but he did get him with the lower body. Most of the time, that's not called. Boy, Turner putting on a show out here, isn't he? Seems to do this, Billy, since his freshman year. He get to the NCAA tournament, especially that sophomore year where he stepped up four to one ratio. Oh, you just turnovers to assists. And Jim, how about this? When they write the history book about Turner, you're saying the guy that's played more games than anybody in the history of college basketball. And somebody said 10 years from now. Well, what game didn't he play? Yeah, the one game he missed. <laughs> and he told me yesterday, I was visiting with him, that Coach Patino kind of warned him that he probably wouldn't be playing in that game. And Anthony Epps won all 40 minutes, championship game 96 against Syracuse. He said, you know, we're going to have to beat him with the outside shot. And hey, look at what Coach Patino got out of yeah. Epps. He made seven threes that that's night. Right. And Turner, that's the only game he never played in. I don't think anybody's questioned what Rick knows about no, basketball. No, no, so, you know, you'd say, it. yes, sir, Coach, and sit down. Brilliant basketball mind. And Pew over the back. Good job. Good job. You know, we saw Wally's world here in game one. And here's Wayne's world. It says Wayne Turner's arm. Will we have Wally's world and Wayne's world in St. Louis? We'll see. Bonnie Bernstein and Billy Packer, Jim Nance with you from the Louisiana Superdome. Kentucky with a two-point lead, 11.48 remaining. And do you see anything all at all that's separating the two right now, or we could see that would separate the two down the stretch? Well, Jim, the thing that jumps out at me, since they're both shooting a good percentage, are turnovers on behalf of Kansas when they try to force tempo in this game. And also, you have to figure that Kentucky's got an advantage here in regard to stamina because of that outstanding bench that they've got in numbers. Evans, and a four-point advantage now. 14 for Hashimu today. And you're looking out on that floor, three guys that have played on a national championship team in Evans, Turner, I'm talking about played a lot on a national championship team. Three seniors. Not many people can have that kind of experience on the floor in this NCAA tournament. Talking about Padgett and Turner and Evans, and certainly McGlure has been around to taste that championship glory too. Just this man right there. You saw him for a moment, Desmond Allison. He's a freshman. He hasn't uh, been to a Final Four, obviously, and yes, he heard has. about it. He was there to watch one yeah, last that's year. Right. It was in his hometown. That was actually the regional. That's regional. Right? That's regional. Yeah, look at Turner, three-pointer. That's when you're really hurting. You're having Kentucky's opponent when Turner's stepping out there and hitting the three. Although he did have four threes in one game in the SEC tournament. This is a big one, and he delivers Ryan Robertson. Seniors and seniors. Just when it got to seven, they had to have that one. Roy Williams out there exhorting his team on. Underneath Evans, blocked by Chenoweth. No call on the play. A lot of body on that one. I was surprised the pass went inside. Kentucky stays in that zone. Chenoweth having a hard time touching the ball. Bradford came back to get it, and what a save. Chenoweth wanted the lob. Boshi, that's a tough shot. Yeah, I don't like his shot selection at all in this game. Kentucky ball. Jim, there's where in, a, in another year, he'll have the experience to know, hey, this is not a good shot for me. My team's not ready to rebound it. 
pull the ball back outside. He's two for nine now. Pull it back out, set up, get good floor balance. There's a lob. Off Evans and off the backboard, and here come the Jayhawks, down four. If you're Tubby Smith, you say, I don't want McGlure making point guard passes. Robertson again. Hit this three. time, he'll shoot three. All right, the Midwest bracket for the regional. We know Oklahoma is set. We've got a 10 and a 13. We've got Oklahoma with wins uh, over Arizona, and today UNC Charlotte will take on the winner of Michigan State Ole Miss, and uh, Miami University will be there. Four to four at the line. Jim, you know something that in reading about uh, Kentucky, that's kind of an amazing thing to me when you think of the incredible history and you've been talking so much about it. 1998 was the first time Kentucky ever won the SEC regular season, the SEC tournament, and the national championship. In other seven years that they've won the national crown, they never had the trifecta before. So Tubby Smith really setting the mark there. Can't do much better than that other than to go undefeated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This year, second in their division behind Tennessee, which was ousted today. Not just ousted, slammed by what Southwest Missouri State by 30. Tennessee finished ahead of uh, Kentucky in that division, that Eastern Division. Here's Allison. We were talking about his attendance last year in Tampa. That's his hometown. Side of this year's uh, Final Four course in St. Pete. He was there to watch Kentucky beat Duke in the regional final last year. Nice pull down by Pugh. Got that little rest that he needed. This run, uh, Billy, right here, could give him the lead. Boshi, two just for ten now. Just can't hit it. But that was a good shot. Oh, what illegal screen by Allison down inside. That's a big turnover in a game like this. Kind of an unnecessary screen. Tonight on CBS, in Alaska, the only thing better than finding oil is not finding oil, still polluting the state 10 years after the Exxon Valdez. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. Well, I just like that a, a great coaching thing that happened right there on the floor. Roy Williams directed all his attention to this young man right here, telling him, hey, keep in there and fire up those shots. You want to give confidence to a guy who's having an off day. Teddy Dupay yesterday for Florida was having all kinds of shooting problems. He stuck with it, and you know he can shoot the ball, and eventually he started hitting it. Robertson, and Kansas with nine unanswered. Just when Kentucky had its largest lead of seven. There's a senior that doesn't want to play his last game today. 20 points for Ryan Robertson. And I don't mean he doesn't want to play this one. He doesn't want this to be his last one. He's played on Kansas teams with more talent and more promise and more expectations, but they never got to the Final Four in Ryan's first three years. Absolutely. When you start thinking about the best teams of the 90s with Pierce and the France, you have to think that Kansas was right up in there, but uh, they did not win a national championship team with them. They were number one seeds the last two years, yep. Kansas. That's four on Bradford. Gregory in for Kansas. Boy, if you're Gregory, you just want to contain Turner. Don't try to steal the ball from him. Prince, three. He likes that shot. And a Kansas run that they've could got be a, added to. They've got a five on four here. Boshi, is this the time? Nope. Boy, he just cannot get one to fall. Chenoweth fights for it and loses control of it out of bounds. Boy, that's two wide open jumpers for the freshman. Big shots. Matt Doherty over there saying, we're using the arm stroke. Hey, just keep firing it up there. It'll go. Try to give him the will. What's happened to Kentucky here on this 9-0 run? I think they've, made, they've made some mistakes away from the ball, Jim. You really haven't, you know, they've turned the ball over without getting shots. Padgett, a senior, will go to the line for two. Could tie it. I'm wondering about the fatigue situation now. You get down to 750, Kansas kid's in excellent shape. The Kentucky puts a lot of pressure on your ability to have some legs at the end of a ball game. And they've got two in foul trouble on the Jayhawks side. Four for Pugh and four for Bradford. Padgett, the MVP of the Southeastern Conference Tournament. 
They're going to bring in Jeff Carey, a freshman from Camden, Missouri. And he will spell Pew with the four. Yeah, the object here is to try to steal two minutes if you're Roy Williams. And this is asking a lot. They're kind of surprised that Lester Earl wasn't the man to come in there with a little bit more experience. But we do have more size here. It's an important couple of minutes for that kid. And the tip out. Yep. And Kentucky down one. Padgett just one of two at the line. Prince realizing he can post up on the much smaller Boshi. Padgett with carry on him. He never could get Prince down in the low post, and I'm sure Turner would like to see that setup, but just can't get it. Patrick gets three on the wing, and the three gives Kentucky the lead back. How often have we seen Turner penetrate and dish back out? And there are two guys, again, with the experience, two seniors understanding how to do it with the clock winding down. Seven minutes to go. It's been a great one, as we expected here in New Orleans. Kentucky leads by two. Nine ties and five lead changes. Where's Kansas going here on this position? They've got a mismatch down inside. Turner's on channel with it. They can just lob the ball up in the air. He's got a small man on him. Gregory gets stuck, but gets the roll to tie it at 61. That's a tenth a, tie of the game. Sensational individual effort there by Gregory just hanging in the air. Penetrating again, and he lost that his footing. Good defensive job by Boshi and stopping that penetration. Boy, Turner and Andre Miller are two of the toughest guys to stop in college basketball with that penetration. All tied with 6.29 remaining. A tradition on... Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein back here in New Orleans. And Billy, college basketball, as you know, is a transient sport. We only get to enjoy watching and witnessing uh, the great players for four years max. And uh, we're going to be saying, as we did to Andre Miller earlier today at this site when the Hughes lost, we're going to be saying goodbye to really the, the passing of an era when you look at the connection some of these both players teams. have on both sides. Exactly. You've got Kentucky. When you think of these guys that are seniors played on two national championship teams, if they were to lose the great connection with the Rick Patino era through the Tubby Smith era, and for Kansas the same way. You think of Jared Austin, you think of Jock Vaughn, and you think of Pearson LaFrance. These have been two great errors in both of these uh, story tradition schools history. There will be more to come, I'm sure. But there is a connector here with the seniors that are on the floor right now. There will be more to come, and there will be players like this man, Bochi, who will then carry that connection. That he has now given Kansas the lead under six minutes to play. Give the kid a lot of credit and give his coaching staff a lot of credit, too, to Aguimon as they keep shooting the ball. Outside. Outside on Gregory. That's just the sixth, one away from a one and one. Jeff Boshi, the freshman point guard for Kansas, has struggled, but he just hit a mighty three from way out to give the Jayhawks the lead. They trail by as many as seven points in the second half. And everybody high fives Kerry as he comes off because he did exactly yep. what he was supposed to do. He didn't get any rebounds, didn't block any shots, didn't score any points, but he got two minutes down for Pew. And look at Padgett's shot drop. He has a chance to tie it again at the line. And got that off despite getting hit on the body and Chenoweth's hands in the way. Watch this power move. Sensational play. This is a terrific play by Padgett. The young man who uh, almost eliminated his career at the University of Kentucky after his first year, not paying attention to academics, and now is an outstanding student. High game. You know, two different ways to get three-point shots. A freshman <laughs> from outside downtown and a senior on a drive. Gregory can lead. Oh, That's going to be intentional. Oh, boy. That will be intentional. It will be two and the ball out of bounds. See McGlure not playing for it at all. His instincts are to keep that guy from scoring. Very dangerous play. Almost could have been flagrant. 
Magloria well, has been a walking collision today. Intentional that ball. one, that one was intentional. Not called shoot, flagrant, shoot. however. So he will stay in the game. There'll be two shots. Kansas and the ball out of bounds for Kansas. What a huge moment. 529. It's all that's left. So we have, uh, in effect, uh, an overtime session plus a half minute. And uh, Kansas gets to begin this stretch with the two free throws. The first one down and possession. Give Gregory some credit for, uh, you know, when you get hammered to the ground like that, your body's not all together right away. Taking his time. Oh, he really delivered, didn't he? Got the most out of the rim on that one. And that you was, know, uh, he's looking back at McGlure to say, hey, take that. He's not happy with it. Those are those soft rims that we uh, were first tipped off about by Wally on practice. Serbiak. Yeah, Thursday, Wally Serbiak said, this is a great place to shoot, and these rims are so soft, they're old, and they've really been uh, broken in. Saw it on those free throws. Nice catch by Pugh in that out-of-bounds pass there. Oh, another foul. This could turn out to be a, a four-point situation here. Well, that's only the, is that their seventh? It is uh, for the team fouls. That is the seventh, so it'll be a one and one. And for Evans, that's number four. And it puts the best free throw shooter that Kansas has on the line. Billy, let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And to this point, field goal percentage is pretty even. And way above what both teams normally give up. 49 and 51, both hold teams under 40. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Robertson, a great free throw shooter. One and one. 85%. This kid has had a great game today, Jim. Passing, generalship on the floor, tough defense, good shooting. He's eight of eight from the line. He's interning in the sports information office this semester, and he might have a chance to go home tomorrow and do a, a lot of work with his own clippings. He may have a chance to go back to St. Louis, where he is from. Three-point Jayhawk lead. With five minutes left in the game. Will Turner penetrate and look to kick out? He doesn't have his normal shooters out here with him now. Pageant's the guy he'd love to do that with. There it is. There's the play. Turner takes it instead. And look at this form. Sensational. He and Pageant were hooked up for the penetration and kick out, but he took it himself. The 12th tie of this game. Good crossover dribble. The freshman, not this time. What a quick putback. Over the back. Genoa, yes. That was a good crossover dribble. The shot just wouldn't fall. Genoa comes following up this shot. But goes right over Paget's back. It'll give Paget a one and one at the other end. Magic with 14 for the game, and he's come through here in the late going, as he often has in his career. Bradford back in for Gregory in the Kansas lineup. Had that monstrous game against Maryland in their huge win, 25 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists. Shows his versatility as a ball player. Calmly sinks the two with 4.30 remaining. Two-point Wildcat lead. Quite a comeback by Kentucky after that four-point play situation. Are these the comeback cats, uh, take two? Well, this is the state of comebacks. Remember Kentucky, LSU, the incredible comeback. And the all-time comeback in the history of college basketball was Duke Tulane here in New Orleans. Bradford short, and Padgett takes it back for Kentucky. And they put the ball in the hands. It gives you a guy that gives you so much confidence when he's got it in his possession. Seven lead changes, 12 ties. 
You, that'll be it for him. And he'll have to head to that bench not knowing if he'll ever wear that Kansas uniform again. Well, that's going to bring Gregory back into the ball game. Really hurts Kansas. Gregory will come in. Dew goes out. The senior out of Omaha gave him a big game, a huge game. Breaking open uh, a tight one with Evansville at the uh, half. Second half splurge by the Jayhawks and T.J. Pugh. Senior has fouled out. Roy Williams said the most courageous player he's ever coached. Came back from some injuries. Pretty tall accolade when you think of some of the players he's had here. Yes, sir. He's 11 years. 1-1. One one. All right, one shot. One shot. Padgett so smooth at the line. A seven-point Kentucky run, and the Wildcats have regained the lead by four. A seven-point Kentucky run has given them the lead by four. Javance Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein here. All right, Billy. Well, what I think, done. what I think Kansas better be prepared for is Kentucky's press right here. See if they come out after them to try to pick them up full court and shock them a little bit. Instead, they, they, they do drop back. I thought they might pick them up full court and try to turn the ball over quickly, but Kansas probably spent most of that time out getting strategy for the shot. Half court set man to man by Kentucky. Ryan Robertson will oh, shoot three again for the second time in this game. And he thought he had the basket as well. He yeah. was thought he could tie it with one trip. Excellent follow through on the shot. Even though he got hit. It's the fourth on Allison. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes. Then it's touched by an angel and the CBS Sunday movie replacing Dad, starring Mary McDonald and Tippi Hedren. Tonight on CBS, he'll shoot three here. Trying to advance another team from the Big 12 into the Sweet 16. And hey, how about the committee? Kudos to the committee. The last team in was Oklahoma. The 13th seed, the at-large team with the worst seed, Oklahoma, and uh, they're into the Sweet 16. Yeah, Purdue was pretty far down that Ten, line. Ten, a lot yeah. of people thought they may not get in. Boy, he just, he and Padgett have just been pure from that foul line. Again, going back to the experience of the seniors. And he has a career high now, Robertson with 24, and a reach-around foul on Bradford. It is so contending for a coach to be thinking that he's got the ball in the hands of seniors in these kind of basketball games. You notice Turner seems like he's totally in control of what's going on. Robertson the same way down on the other end. Another Jayhawk falls victim to the foul count. It's Bradford this time. Pugh was the first to go. And Lester Earl. Not winning any popularity contest here in New Orleans. They're going to have to rely on uh, on Lester here. And you know, uh, Jim, you talk about a guy maturing over time. As a freshman, Padgett played an average of four minutes a game, scored two points and 1.2 rebounds a game. So that form so good. Yeah. Now, and this is the first got double bonus the rest of the way. He had 28 points his first year as a player at That's Kentucky. That's right. Total, not in a game. Total. Pretty good talent ahead of him yeah. on that team, though. Second one rattles in. Two-point lead. Kind of surprised Kentucky didn't pick up full court after that made shot, just to throw Kansas off track a little bit. Kentucky has brought back uh, Evans with his four fouls. We approach three minutes to go. Padgett now playing Robertson. Boshi for the lead. And the freshman does it again. You said it, Billy. Just keep shooting, and he has shot his way out of that slump that he was experiencing for three quarters of this game at Kid, nine in the second half. Kid's got a lot of guts. And he's been asked to guard Turner during this set, too. Magic. Oh, there's a push by, was that Earl trying to run through Turner? But this is not all bad. Turner not, you know, we talk about all the great things he does, but one of the things he has problems with is free throw shooting. He's gotten better, though. He's 68% this senior season it's double bonus time again so two the rest of the way first two years at kentucky shot 56 percent from the line one to tie two for the lead 
And he's been shooting it good today from the outside as well now. That, isn't that the first time he's been on the line today? It is indeed. Yo, yo. Kentucky back in front and a timeout called by the Wildcats with 2.40 remaining. They take a 20, so they have two full and 120 remaining. Remember, Kansas is, uh, is out of 20-second timeouts, although they do have two full timeouts remaining. Monday on CBS, uh, guys, listen up. Having trouble sleeping at night because your wife's hogging the bed? Then here's some advice. Don't do what Raymond does on the next all-new Everybody Loves Raymond. Monday, 9 Eastern, 8 Central here on CBS. Jim, I think of this Kentucky team this year. Auburn came in to Rupp Arena, 17-0. Kentucky beat them. Okay, two of Auburn's losses, a team that has advanced to a regional, uh, were against Kentucky. Maryland came in 10-0. They're moving to a regional. Kentucky beat them as well. That was the schedule, not for some reason ranked the hardest in the country. I don't know how it couldn't have been, though. Good switch by Evans. He's now on Robertson. Nobody guarding him here. He's Robertson got a shot again. Adds to his career high. It's a three for a two-point lead. Credit Lester Rowe with a fine screen, and when he picked off Evans, who had already made the switch, there was nobody to pick him up. And as hot as he's been with his career high, you gotta stay with him. Magic working down on the blocks. Gives it back. Evans, the senior, down and out. And Robertson there for the rebound. Boy, Robertson is really having some game. Isn't he? 27 points. He's blowing out his career high. And he's got the ball again. Now Prince on him, the freshman. Here they get the switch again. What a possession this is. Under 140 to go and a two-point lead. Trying to make it a two-possession game. Bochi, the freshman over Padgett. And the, and the coaches from Kansas telling him, keep shooting the ball when he was two for ten. Killing Kentucky from the outside. Boshi and Robertson. Oh, great rebound. Wow, he was able to hold on to it somehow. Here comes the penetration. Robertson, oh, I'm sorry, Turner, did he travel? No, outside. Turner puts that ball down the floor and turns that corner. That's in the line for two. Here he goes, that jump stop, and then straight up for the shot. One of his most effective offensive moves. So no basket. Foul was outside, but it's a double bonus situation anyway. So down five with 108. Percentage is working in the favor of having this guy on the line if you're Kansas. Even though he stripped the last two. And here you see London coming in for offensive and ball handling purposes. And again, Jim, I was really surprised Kentucky didn't press on a made free throw the last few times. Maybe you just turn one over. Let's see what happens here. Down to three and a timeout. Kentucky. A full timeout. I'll be shocked if they don't come out pressing this time. A full timeout by the Wildcats. Will they be the comeback cats again? From five down to three, Kansas ball when we come back. Remember that arrow, it belongs to Kentucky and Billy. I know this is the kind of game you had hoped we would see here and you what well, we expected. Said. Yeah, and we never had seen a Kentucky-Kansas matchup in the NCAA tournament before today. And uh, for you and uh, all the historical knowledge and reverence you have for this sport, what does this mean here? Well, I think it's great, and I think that Tubby did exactly what I expected him to do a few possessions ago, and that is pick up full court. A pass, gets it over to London. They're, they're not over the 10-second line yet. seconds, and they get it apart across with two to spare. Can Robertson do anything else for his team? Saved him right there. They were in some serious trouble. With the lead by three and possession. 45 to play. Which team will advance to St. Louis? Seven on the shot clock. If she tries to cross over, takes a very difficult shot. And all Kentucky underneath. A three to tie. They don't have to have it now, Billy. No, no. It's much too early to just think three. 
get the penetration from Turner and the kick out if necessary. There's the drive and the put up. McClure gets it back. What an effort. Back stops Padgett. He'll take the three to tie it. Oh, boy. Can't happen. How about Shepard? You think of Shepard? You hey, think of last year? This is it. This is it. No timeouts. Well, I'd get the ball in Robertson's hands. I really would. Seven seconds. Game on the line. Will the champs be dethroned right here? Robertson over to Gregory. Overtime. Going to overtime. It's only fitting. We go to overtime. I'm not believing this shot right here. Well, do you remember the Duke game in St. Petersburg? Do you rem <laughs> you remember how he turned around <laughs> and sir. pumped his fists? Just a report play performance. How about this? He this slides is right over. This is even better, though. This was harder. Yes, it was. Play. Yeah, tougher shot. He was wide open on that one. The Wildcats and the Jayhawks will go to overtime to settle this one. Strategy, we see it so successful so often they don't use the timeout Kansas they go ahead and try to get the defense without a chance to get set and what happened with the Jayhawks on the last play well, well I think that that is a good strategy there because you know what you want to do with the ball and the defense uh, you don't want them a chance to set up and you certainly don't want them to have a chance to intercept an inbounds pass but I thought what Kansas should have done is gotten the ball in Robertson's hands to start the set as opposed to in the freshman's hands and then Robertson could have made the decision to pass a little bit sooner or to take his shot. Remember Roy Williams side will have to go this extra five with two starters fouled out and it's a Jayhawk team that really goes eight deep on the season. So they're down to six players that have played quality minutes on the season. Lester Earls in the game along with uh, Marlon London the freshman. Bet you for these players, they feel like they've been out here for a week. You know what? <laughs> London too strong. And McGlore. Taya McGlore made a huge play on that pageant three just to keep him alive. They were able to see. He sure did. And, and, and that, also that, that, that should go unnoticed. You know? Presence of mind to get it back out to the, the right guy. There's where he does have trouble. In traffic, catching the ball. Kentucky started this. Overtime period in his own. Kansas stays right with their man to man. Boy, has Roy Williams done a tremendous job getting this young team into a tough defensive squad. Padgett again. Scott Padgett taking over. That's a two, though, not a three. Scott Padgett now with 25 points. Now, London and Robertson, the two best scorers that they've got out here from the outside against this zone. That's to Earl. Where's he going? Outside. Glore. Turner stops at the strike. Freezes the defense. And Prince, the freshman, presence of mind to bring it back out. You think Kansas could be a little tired? to get yep. beat on the boards here. Chenoweth, and that's going to be on Padgett. And give London some credit for blocking Padgett out, so they gave Chenoweth a clear shot at the basket. The foul on number 34. It's a second on Padgett. Second. You know, I think of so many programs that have had guys that have graduated, and then the next year, the remnants. So I think of Ralph Sampson yeah. moving on. And, and the 84 team for Virginia. Yeah, going Virginia on moving on. This is, these kids from Kansas been told, well, you know, you, you had your best shot in 96, 97, 98. It's a one and one at the line for Chinoweth, who has not scored since halftime. Let's face it, Billy. It's a, it's a bracket that's a, got a, a lot of interesting ingredients to it when you throw in Miami and the underdog and Wally Serbiak and his outstanding play here. You got the one seed Michigan State that's been pulling away here in the late going against Ole Miss. You have, uh, well, you've got Oklahoma, 13th seed, the last team to get in is alive. And uh, you know, either one of these teams capable, capable of winning here and going on and winning to at the regional. Well, everybody knocking the Big 12, they could have up two teams in that region. Oklahoma and Kansas, and there's Turner wanting to take it over the top of a smaller man. And Kentucky staying in that zone. 
Bushi breaking to the outside. He's got the jumper. Yep, over Chenoa's screen. Didn't the have the rebound, rebound to Paget. Two-point lead and possession for the Wildcats. Boy, it's Turner is just, you know, he's saying, I'm fresher than you are and going right by everybody. That was on Bochy, his second. So that means, again, we're in the double bonus, and it'll be double bonus on the other side, too, the rest of the way. You can sense the legs of Kansas not quite where they were at the start of this second half. So they, they are a little weary right now. Turner getting stronger by the second. Remember when he uh, stepped up to the line for the first time? Recall how we were saying uh, he had uh, shaky years at the free throw line. He's five of five today, and they've all been here in the late going. This is the 60th anniversary of the NCAA basketball tournament and two of the most storied programs in the game. I've never met in the tournament until today and a classic matchup that has to go an extra five minutes to sort things out to see who will advance to the Sweet 16 in the Midwest. Gregory for Kansas. Good job by Gregory to fill that open space in the 2-3. Genoa double team and a timeout called. That was a good move by Gregory. Came right up through the middle of that 2-3 zone defense. Get himself an open shot but just couldn't put it down. A full timeout by Kansas. The Jayhawks, they had a five-point lead with a minute nine left in regulation. Then Kentucky forced the overtime. Kansas has possession. Down three. Having a hard time stopping Wayne Turner's penetration is creating all of this for Kentucky. And their five-point comeback, Billy, with just a little more than a minute to go in regulation. But no question, he's the fresher player out here on the floor, whether it's Bushy trying to guard him or whether Robertson gets caught on with a switch. Right now, the key is, I think, that Kansas has got to get off a good shot. They might want to go inside this zone first and kick out as opposed to just being content to shoot on the outside before they hit inside. Chenoweth, as you pointed out, Jim, really hadn't touched the ball much in the second half. They stay in the zone, but nobody breaking up to the middle of the foul line as Gregory did before. There's an opening there. Chenoweth does, but you want him right under the basket. Good solid screen. Boshi and again, he's hit a three. Solid screen against the zone. Prince didn't come up. 18 for the freshman. We have yet another tie. The 16th tie of this game. Up and over. One of, it, but McGlure is there. One of Kentucky's favorite plays, the back screen. And lob right over the top. And McGlure is playing some big minutes here today. Oh, yeah. As you said, that rebound that he got and captured and out the pageant, this game had been over in regulation. And in the right place on that There's possession, There's another screen, too. and that time Evans doesn't go for it. He picks up, even though it's in the zone, he plays it like it's man-to-man. -man. We approach a minute and a half to go in overtime. Bochy. Oh, off McGlory's head and pageant right there. Two-point wildcat lead. Kansas patient to go back and... Not come out and press or panic. Good move on their part, but boy, London's got a lot of pressure now trying to guard this guy with the ball. In the pageant. And a foul. He'll go to the line for two. And a reminder, 60 minutes is coming up next here on CBS, except for those of you on the West Coast. Well, we have Ryan Robertson on the Kansas side. With a career high today, Billy, 27. And this man... We'll step to the line, Scott Padge. If he makes uh, two free throws, he'll have 27. He just needs one point here to get his career high. How about those seniors? That's that's exactly what you want on the floor. What's interesting watching these two benches, neither team very confident right now. Just both holding their breath. To the rest of the way. What Padgett showed today is similar to what we saw from Wally Zerbiak, and that is that you know he's got the total game. He steps out and hits the three. He can post up down low. He's got the medium range jumper. Solid rebounder and defender. It's a four-point lead with a minute five to go. Kentucky came back with this amount of time in regulation, but they were five down. Now can Kansas pull the trick? They, they shouldn't worry about just threes. The coach has got a wide open three. We had a good look. Just a little too strong and out to Turner. That was Paget McGlure sandwiching Chenoweth. 
You had a chance for an offensive board. Now Kansas may have to come out and pick up. When they do, that opens up the floor for Turner. Foul on Gregory. Roy Williams wanted a foul earlier. And he would like to probably have an off-the-ball foul on McGlure, Jim. You, you, know, you don't want to keep putting his best, the best free throwers up there. Gadget has had a lot of opportunities at the line. He's 10 of 13 today. Yeah, if you have your choice in your Kansas, you want to put McGlure on the line whenever possible down this stretch. Increases his new career high to 27. I think he started this season missing his first 18 three-point shots. Five point, make it a six point. And four to five to six with Padgett living at the line. The way Kansas has been firing threes, who knows? Jayhawks, can they come back from six down and OT? I want to be the first Mexican-American president of the United States. Jose Luis Baca is a 13-year-old from Maxwell Middle School. He's researching a term paper about Pancho Villa that he'll write with Microsoft Word. You got to look at your culture to understand who you really are. Technology is giving Jose a way to study his heroes. And maybe someday, he can become one himself. Breakthrough to the new world of Mach 3 from Gillette. The first triple blade shaving system. Three blades specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. So you don't have to shave the same area over and over, which means less irritation. Three blades, fewer strokes, less irritation. Mach 3 from Gillette. Well, there was one year where I, I almost lost the entire backyard to crabgrass, and I vowed that would never happen again. The following year, I did use Turf Builder plus halts. It not only got rid of the crabgrass, but it also greened up the lawn and thickened it. I used the cheaper brands, but I didn't have the color that I wanted, and I did have the weeds. Look how thick it is. Look at the color of it. There are no weeds. I take the credit instead of Scott's. I call it Luby Lawn. I'm very proud of the results that I get from Scott's. And there will be no crabgrass. authentic khaki you'll wear out before they do finally a hotel where you can laugh without reservations Garrett? Well, thank you very much John Larroquette is pain series premiere CBS Monday after Raymond and the arrow with the Wildcats as we welcome you back to New Orleans, Jim Nance and Billy Packer and Bonnie Bernstein here in overtime. And in this OT, Kansas has only made one of seven field goals, Billy. 60 minutes coming up next, except for those of you on the West Coast. Jim, stamina, a problem. We talk about that. Tubby Smith, once again, masterful coaching job on his part. Roy Williams as well in this game. His team has done everything he's asked. But Tubby just so confident to use that bench and wear teams down. Hanging out, looking for an open three opportunity. And they're really out there on the perimeter defending. Kentucky gives them nothing. So Robertson forces the issue and he'll go to the line for two. Under a half minute to go. Once they got inside, Pageant would have been better off not fouling there. You know, just go ahead and take your chances even if he gets a two. On Kentucky. So we're in the double bonus. Both sides, but that was in the act of shooting anyway. Now, if you're Kansas, what you want to do, if he's fortunate enough to make these, you want to foul McGlure. You want to put him on the foul line. McGlure and Chenoweth, a little bickering back and forth here on the block out. Right, 
You want to pick up immediately after this made free throw if it happens and foul McGlure. Two for two. Oh, that, that's not what you want to do. That's a technical foul. They were lucky there. Yeah, but that hit that, the deck. No, that would that's a that's a, that's a, down. That is a technical foul. No, there's no call at all. That see they're trying to foul and the referees aren't paying attention. They're not there it is. They finally did. Now they got McGlure on the line, Billy. Yeah, now see once, prescribed. once the ball is handed to the man that's taking the ball out of bounds, that's a different story. But before that, when Chenoweth threw McGlure to the, foul, the floor, that should have been a technical. It's the fourth on Chenoweth. Here it is, Billy, what you're talking about. Right yeah. side, right yeah, side. Yeah, watch, it, watch what happens right here. The shot goes up. Now watch. There's the foul. The ball has not yet been put in play. That should have been a technical foul. Kentucky should have been on the line. And in that case, McGlure wouldn't have even had to shoot it. He's a 56% shooter. Two opportunities here. Oh, he's done everything else right today. Why not? He's shown a soft touch, picked up some loose balls, been in the right place at the right time a couple of occasions in the late action. Tubby still battling on that sidelines. He said, Kansas just got a player in the game. I want my guy in the game. <laughs> Trying to get Tayshawn Prince in. <laughs> he is intense. He doesn't win that battle. Tubby on that original Rick Patino staff. Herb Sendak and Ralph Willard. Quite a staff. Goes to Allison instead, and McGlure's second spins out. Now we got the five-point game. They need a two and a three, so they don't have to have just the three right away. They settle for the two quick. Robertson from way out there. And Padgett Who else? down with it. Who else? He will shoot his 16th and 17th free throws of the game. Jim, when you're down five, though, you've got to understand the arithmetic. You don't have to take the three. And a lot of times, a team just subconsciously thinks you're going three so you can drive to the basket and get a quick two. He has a double-double. I hate to reduce this... Uh, this effort, this intensity, and what he's brought to this team today down to stats, but it is a career high 28 points and 10 rebounds. A man who uh, had a hard time getting his Kentucky career started, and now he doesn't want to let go of it. Oh, he hits himself in the head. 60 minutes coming up next, except on the West Coast. Well, as proud as everybody is about the way this guy's developed as a basketball player, I imagine his parents are even prouder of the way he's developed as a student athlete. All academic SEC makes it a six point game. 17 seconds to go. Now you need nothing but threes. Got to have a three right away. Might as well put it up. He's got the range for it. Looking for a screen. Oh, look at Evans right on him. Blocked by Prince. Chenoweth the three. Underneath Robertson. Put back, but only two seconds and a timeout. Well, nothing else that Robertson could do but put it up, but that didn't help him. He had to fire that ball back out and take a chance. 2.7 seconds remaining, and we'll have the St. Louis Regional all set. Where did they find this one? Chapel Hill. Toxicology? Negative. I'm on the road to number one. Going to all the colleges. Going to all the NCAA colleges. I'm going to prove that people love the taste of Pepsi One. Hello! I have some Pepsi One here! New Pepsi One. With a new secret recipe that makes it taste too good to be called diet. Cactuses love the taste of Pepsi One. People love the taste of Pepsi One. New Pepsi One. True cola taste, one calorie. Cellular One, clear across America. Introducing delivery confirmation for Priority Mail. Now, what's your priority?
Kansas, Kentucky. Well, we're all set for the Thursday times. And here you have it, St. John's and Maryland in the south will be first to play in the Sweet 16. Out west, they'll tip it just behind it with Gonzaga, Florida, 17 minutes later. Ohio State, Auburn, and Iowa, and Connecticut. We waited now, here, what, 60 years in the tournament to see these two collide for the first time. It was worth the wait, huh, Billy? Would you yeah, say? I would say so, Jim. Look at that uh, matchup there, St. John's, Maryland. That, that, that is a powerhouse twosome going after each other there. Mike Jarvis has that club playing extremely well. Gary Williams with a wide open style. If you're in that town, get a ticket. Would have been a quick strategy here. Anything you can do at all. You just want to get the ball inbounds and maybe to that senior player who's been so effective. Referees. It's only ball. fitting. It's fit in in the hands of Scott Padgett. He will carry it home with him. A day and a game to remember, not only for Scott Padgett, but for the Kentucky Wildcats as well. Ryan Robertson, his last ball game, tremendous play by that young man. Kentucky advances to the Sweet 16. And next, we'll take on Miami University on Friday night in St. Louis. Michigan State and Oklahoma will also be in that regional. Two pretty good Ryan Robertson is there. the Chevrolet MVP. Wayne Turner, although I think you got to share it with Scott Padgett. Last year, they were the comeback catch. They came back from five down today with a minute to go, and they're advancing on Kentucky. Let's go back now to New York. Greg Gumbel.